Hey, this is Mr. Mason Ed, and in this tutorial, we are going to practice solving problems that are related to rates and proportion. All right, so this problem reads that a group of 12 students is deciding whether to go to the movies or go roller skating. Movie tickets are three for thirty-three dollars and seventy-five cents, and roller skating entrance fees are forty-six dollars for four students. How much will a group of 12 students save by going to the movies? Well, in the question, they are inferring that it is going to be cheaper to go to the movies because they are asking how much will they save by going to the movies. And that is what we have to find out. All right, so the given rate for the cost of movie tickets is $33.75. And that is for three tickets. And for the entrance fees to go roller skating, the given rate is $46 for four students. And what we have to do is figure out what the cost is going to be for 12 students. Now notice that the number 3 and the number 4 are both factors of 12. So what we can do is we can scale these rates up to represent the cost for 12 students. So 3 can fit into 12 exactly 4 times. So we're going to scale this up by 4, which means we have to scale $33.75 up by 4. And this is scaled up by a factor of 3, so we have to multiply 46 by 3. All right, so I'm going to do this first really quick. 3 times 6 is 18, so I would carry the 1. 3 times 4 is 12, plus that 1 is 13. So it would cost $138 for 12 students to go roller skating. All right, now we have to take 33.75 and multiply that by 4. And to do that, I am just going to use a calculator. So we have 33.75 times 4 and that is going to give us 135. Now we can see that the cost to do each activity for 12 students is about the same but it is a little bit more expensive to go roller skating. So by going to the movies the 12 students would save three dollars altogether which really isn't a huge savings and really they should just go where they want to go. However, this would be the answer to this problem. All right, let's go ahead and solve another example. All right, so Emma and Kyler are telemarketers. Yesterday, Emma reached four people in 25 phone calls. Kyler reached two people in 10 phone calls. If each telemarketer continues at the same rate, who will reach more people in 50 calls? And we have to figure out how many more. All right, so the first given rate is Emma's rate, which is four people in 25 phone calls. So we're going to write four people are reached in 25 phone calls. All right. Now, that is Emma's rate. So I'm going to put an E here for Emma. Now, for Kyler, he reaches two people in 10 phone calls. All right, and it says that these are going to continue for the same rate, and we got to figure out who will reach more people in 50 calls. So what we're going to do is we are going to convert this 25 to 50, so that means we are scaling up, and we also have to take these 10 phone calls that Kyler made and scale that up to 50 as well. Now, to scale 25 up to 50, we would have to multiply by 2. So we are doubling 25. So we have to also double the 4 to make sure that the rates are equivalent to each other. This means that this is going to be proportional to this. And this 10 is going to increase by a factor of 5 to make 50. So we have to increase this by a factor of 5. And 2 times 5 is 10. So we can see that at the same rate, if the two telemarketers reach 50 calls, we can see that Kyler will have contacted two more people than Emma. So the answer is two more people. All right, let's go ahead and do another example. Okay, so machine A pops 15.75 ounces of popcorn in three minutes. So let's just write that rate right away. So 15.75 ounces of popcorn in three minutes. Machine B pops 22 ounces of popcorn in four minutes. So let us go ahead and write that rate. So 22 ounces 
in four mints. All right, so it says that if each machine pops popcorn for 10 minutes, will there be enough popcorn for 12 nine ounce bags? All right, so we know that there are nine ounces in a bag and there's 12 bags. So if we multiply 12 by nine, that would give us a total of 108 ounces. So we have to see if these rates for machine A and machine B combined after 10 minutes would give us enough popcorn to have a total of 108 ounces. So what we have to do is we have to change these rates to reflect 10 minutes. So this is 15.75 ounces just for three minutes of popping and this machine popped 22 in four minutes. So here's what I'm gonna do to solve this problem. I'm gonna convert each one of these rates to a unit rate. So I'm gonna start by dividing the numerator by the denominator. Whenever converting any rate into a unit rate, you're just dividing one number by the other number. So let's take 1575 and divide that by three, and that is going to give us 5.25 ounces in one minute. And now we have to take 22 and divide that by four, and that would give us 5.5 ounces per minute. So we converted both of those rates into unit rates. And now what we can do is we can convert both of these rates to a rate of 10 minutes. So basically what we're gonna do is we are going to make that one 10 times bigger, which means we have to make the numerator 10 times bigger. And the same thing over here, to turn one minute into 10, we would multiply by 10. So we would do the same to the top. Now, whenever multiplying by 10, all we have to do is move our decimal point one space to the right. Doing that always makes your number 10 times bigger. So 5.25 is going to become 52.5. And that's how many ounces machine A is going to pop in 10 minutes. And for machine B, we move the decimal one place to the right to make it 10 times bigger. So 5.5 ounces is scaled up to 55 ounces in 10 minutes. Now let's combine both of these quantities together. So now we have to take 55 ounces and we have to add that to 52.5 ounces. And we take our decimal and we drop it down and that is going to give us 107.5 ounces, which is quite not enough. It is super close to 108 ounces, but technically it is not enough. Although who would really be counting? But in a technical sense for this problem, we would say that there is not enough. And how short are we? We are short just 0 0.5 ounces. Because if we were to add another half ounce to 107.5, that would be exactly 108. So we are just short of what is needed. All right, let's go ahead and do another problem. All right, so Daniel typed a 32 word paragraph in two thirds of a minute. What is his typing speed in words per minute? All right, so the given rate at which Daniel is typing is 32 words in two thirds of a minute. And the problem is asking us to change this to a unit rate indicated by the word per, which means each or one minute. So we wanna see how many words how many words is that equal to per minute or for one minute? Now, whenever converting something into a unit rate, all you really need to do is take this top number, 32, and divide it by this bottom number. So we're gonna take 32 and we are gonna divide that by two thirds. Now, whenever converting to a unit rate, take the per unit, and what I mean by that is per what? In this case, it is per minutes, and that is always what we have to divide by. So we have to take 32 and divide that by two thirds of a minute to figure out how much that is going to be per minute. Now, we're gonna change this 32 into a fraction, and now we're gonna keep, change our division to multiplication, and write the reciprocal of two thirds, which is three halves. All right, now we could just go straight across and then simplify the resulting fraction, or we can use a little bit of cross cancellation here. 
32 and 2 have a common factor of 2. So I'm going to divide 2 into 2, which is 1, and 2 into 32, which is 16. And now we have 16 times 3, which is 48. And on the bottom, we have 1 times 1, which is 1. So we would say that Daniel typed 48 words in one minute. All right, let's go ahead and do another example. All right, this problem reads that Isela is knitting a scarf for her brother. It took her one quarter hour to knit two fifths of a foot of scarf. How fast is Isela's knitting speed in feet per hour? All right, so this problem is asking us to determine the unit rate or speed at which Isela is knitting. The word per is a dead giveaway that we are trying to express as a unit rate. Now, the per unit, in this case hours, should be written at the bottom as our denominator. So hours is going to go at the bottom and feet is going to go at the top. And in the problem, the numbers given are one quarter and two fifths. One fourth must go on the bottom because that is our per unit per hour and this says one quarter hour. So we're going to put one fourth on the bottom to represent hours. And two fifths is going to go at the top to represent feet. Now, we want to convert this into a rate per hour or a unit rate. So we want to change this one fourth into one hour. All right, now to change one quarter hour into one hour, we would have to multiply that quantity by four. Because if you think about it, imagine we had one quarter of an hour right here. We would need four of these to make one hour. So because we increase the denominator by a factor of four, we do the same thing to the top. So essentially we just multiply two fifths by four. And we're just gonna express this as a fraction as four over one. So we multiply two times four, which is eight, and five times one, which is five. And now we are going to rename this as a mixed number. Eight divided by five would be one and three fifths. So that's how many feet that Isela is knitting the scarf per hour. Now, there is another way that we could have approached this problem. Whenever you have a given rate, simply by taking the numerator and dividing it by its denominator, that will convert it to a unit rate. So straight away, we could have taken two fifths at the top here, and we can divide that by the denominator of one fourth, and then using the standard algorithm, we keep, change our sign to multiplication, and flip. We'll write the reciprocal of one fourth. And that is still gonna give us eight fifths, which of course is equal to one and three fifths feet per hour. All right, let's go ahead and do another example. All right, so this problem reads that a sloth took three quarters of an hour to crawl one eighth of a mile. How fast is the sloth crawling in miles per hour? Okay, so we have to take the given rate in the problem and convert to a unit rate expressed in miles per hour or for one hour. So we have to start by putting the number of miles on the top and the number of miles given in the problem is one eighth. So let's write one eighth for the numerator. And I'm gonna put an M for miles and on the bottom, we have to take three quarters and express that as hours. So I'm just gonna use H to represent that. Now to convert any rate into a unit rate, we can just divide the numerator by the denominator. So we can take one eighth and divide that by three fourths. And then we keep one eighth as is. We change our division to multiplication and we write the reciprocal of three fourths, which is four thirds. All right, so we can just multiply straight across if we want to and then simplify, or we can simplify it first. So I'm just gonna start by multiplying straight across. That would give us four over 24. And of course, both of these are divisible by a greatest common factor of four. So four divided by four is one, and 24 divided by four is equal to six. So we would say that the sloth was crawling one sixth of a mile in one hour. All right, let's go ahead and do another example. All right, so this problem reads that 
Reed completed 60 jumping jacks in two thirds of a minute. Safe completed 40 jumping jacks in half of a minute. Who had more jumps per minute and by how much more? All right, because they want us to figure out who had more jumps per minute, we are basically just converting the given rates into unit rates. So let's start with Reed. The given rate at which Reed is completing his jumping jacks is 60 of them in two thirds of a minute. And SAFE is completing his at a rate of 40 jumping jacks in one half of a minute. All right. Now remember, to convert any rate into a unit rate, we can simply just take this numerator and divide by the denominator. So we can take 60 and divide that by 2 thirds, which is going to be changed into 60 multiplied by 3 halves. So basically what we're doing now is we are multiplying 60 by 3 and then dividing by 2. Now I like to use cross cancellation here. I'm going to take 60 and divide that by 2 first, which is exactly 30. So basically what we're saying is 2 is divided into itself once and 2 goes into 60 30 times. And that leaves us with 30 times 3, which is equal to 90. And well, it's really 90 over 1, but we can just write 90. This is how many jumping jacks that Reed would complete in one minute, assuming that he maintains the same pace. Now, for safe, we're going to take 40, and we are going to divide that by 1 half. Remember, dividing the numerator by the denominator converts a rate into a unit rate. So we're going to take 40 over 1 and multiply that by 2 over 1, which gives us 80 over 1, which of course is equal to 80. So now we can compare these rates as unit rates. And per minute, we would say that Reed completed more jumping jacks in one minute. He completed 10 more than Safe did. Now, another way that we could have visualized this problem is we could have represented one minute as one complete circle. And for Reed, the rate was given in thirds of a minute. So I'm going to take this circle and break it into three equal parts. And it said that he completed 60 jumping jacks in two thirds of a minute. So if I were to shade two of these pieces, that would represent 60 jumps. So I'm going to divide that 60 evenly between these two pieces right here, which would be 30 and 30. And if each one of these thirds is 30, at the same rate, this would also have to be 30. And if we add all this together, that would be 90 jumps in one minute. And we're going to do the same thing here for safe. If we were to represent one minute as a circle and then cut it into two equal parts because they said that he jumped 40 jumps in half of a minute, we would write 40 in this half. And if he continued at the same rate, the next half would also be 40 jumps. And if we add 40 and 40, that gives us 80.